Welcome to the channel PK2023. Hope everyone has a good time watching our videos. Arsenal's statement win at Newcastle illustrates strides Michael Arteta has made. If you needed any more evidence of how much Arsenal have improved, how far they have come in the last year under Michael Arteta, this was as conclusive as you were going to get. You can say the same about Newcastle United too. This was a clash between two titans, two evenly matched, top four sides who have both made huge strides forward since they last met here. On that occasion, Newcastle triumphed, this time it was Arsenal. It feels like the start of a rivalry between two clubs, who are going to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, fighting and scrapping with each other, locked in a wrestling match at the top of the table. Whether either of them will be strong enough to replace Manchester City as champions is a debate for another day, but what is clear is that, in the race for Champions League football over the course of the next few years, it is not going to be easy for anyone, not Liverpool, Chelsea, Tottenham, Brighton or Aston Villa, to dislodge them moving forward. The two most improved teams in the Premier League, look like they are here to stay. That is the conclusion to take after this high octane volatile intense affair. It was a high quality contest, physical, frenetic and fast, between two excellent teams. It was settled by fine margins. Newcastle fell short, they did not take their chances. Arsenal did take theirs, scoring both their goals at the end of prolonged periods of home team pressure. That is the ultimate sign of strength. They became only the second team to beat the Newcastle in front of their own supporters. Liverpool have won here twice, in the past 15 months. It was a huge result in performance. If you needed any more evidence of how much Arsenal have improved, how far they have come in the last year under Michael Arteta, this was as conclusive as you were going to get. You can say the same about Newcastle United too. This was a clash between two titans, two evenly matched top four sides who have both made huge strides forward since they last met here. On that occasion, Newcastle triumphed, this time it was Arsenal. It feels like the start of a rivalry between two clubs, who are going to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, fighting and scrapping with each other, locked in a wrestling match at the top of the table. Whether either of them will be strong enough to replace Manchester City as champions is a debate for another day, but what is clear is that, in the race for Champions League football over the course of the next few years, it is not going to be easy for anyone, not Liverpool, Chelsea, Tottenham, Brighton or Aston Villa, to dislodge them moving forward. The two most improved teams in the Premier League, look like they are here to stay. That is the conclusion to take after this high octane, volatile intense affair. It was a high quality contest, physical, frenetic and fast between two excellent teams. It was settled by fine margins. Newcastle fell short, they did not take their chances. Arsenal did take theirs, scoring both their goals at the end of prolonged periods of home team pressure. That is the ultimate sign of strength. They became only the second team to beat the Newcastle in front of their own supporters. Liverpool have won here twice, in the past 15 months. It was a huge result in performance. Jacob Kiwir of Arsenal after the shot from Bruno Gimmeries. It was a high octane match from the off with Arsenal's Jacob Kiwir nearly handling Bruno Gimmeries shot early on credit. Robbie J. Barrett, AMA, Getty. That is why Michael Arteta's side are going to either finish as the best or second best team in England this season. It is also why Newcastle will almost certainly end up being the third or fourth best behind them. It was against Newcastle United at this ground last season that Arsenal's hopes of a top four finish were extinguished. It was a 2-0 defeat that exposed Arsenal's frailties, their flakiness as they crumbled under the pressure of a black and white onslaught. They looked weak and timid on that occasion. They were bullied. But 12 months later, under the same sort of pressure, in the face of a similar onslaught from the home team, Arsenal stood tall and firm. They weathered the storm and whatever Newcastle threw at them, they returned. It was a great game of football Newcastle started like an express train, hitting the post through Jacob Murphy at the end of their first attack and then appearing to have won a penalty when Bruno Gimmer's shot hit Jacob Kiwier. It looked like handball in real time and referee Chris Cavanaugh pointed to the spot. Indeed, 
The defender's arm looked as though it had come down to block the ball but VAR intervened and urged the official to have another look. After several replays, the ball had indeed hit the Arsenal player's thigh and the penalty was correctly overturned. The delay and subsequent anger generated by the reversal of the decision knocked Newcastle out of their stride and they switched off at an unthreatening throw-in. Martin Odegaard was allowed to gather possession in space 30 yards from goal. Nobody got out quickly to close him down, with Joel Linton on his heels, and the Norwegian advanced one stride before whipping a low shot through the legs of Sven Bodman and beyond the dive of Nick Pope. It was a soft goal to concede but it did wonders for Arsenal's confidence. With the lead, they could look to invite Newcastle onto them and then counter. It was a plan that almost worked to perfection, but Pope made three excellent saves, one-on-one, -on -one, to deny Gabriel Martinelli, Buke Osaka and Odegaard. The visitors made sure the game was slowed down at every opportunity, winding up the home fans and players alike. Granit Xhaka somehow managed to go down for treatment four times, something pointed out by Dan Byrne, and not come off. Arsenal did not even bother to warm up a substitute each time. Arity refused to answer a question about this. It was annoying but it worked. Newcastle were rattled, irritable and lacked precision in their play. They still could and probably should have equalized, when Gimmerers picked out Joe Willock inside the area but his finish was a par 1, far too close to Aaron Ramsdale. Newcastle came so close to pulling level in the second half. Alexander Isak hit the post with a header. Shar was denied by an excellent save from Aaron Ramsdale and there was a superb goal-saving tackle from Saka to prevent Callum Wyson scoring a certain goal. Arsenal needed a second and got it when Martinelli's cross was turned into his own goal by the unfortunate Shar. Newcastle came up short. Arsenal may still do so, Manchester City are so good, but they could not have done anything more to make this title run in an exciting one.